to two parts. The first part could be taken uh, by me. Uh, I would be teaching about uh, uh, complexity analysis in short, and then uh, second part uh, will be taken by Rajesh. Rajesh will be take uh, Rajesh will be teaching you various techniques of uh, sorting. So I would uh, basically teach you uh, complexity, uh, how to analyze time and space complexity, and then a uh, few methods of fast input output that is very important in uh, competitive programming. So, okay. <clears throat> Okay, I hope my screen is visible. Is it? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Neeraj. So, uh, for now, I would be discussing about complexity analysis, uh, which is uh, one of the most important thing uh, when you write some program or write some algorithm. So, let's start. Okay. So, uh, why is it so important? Uh, uh, often, uh, when we write some uh, algorithm or uh, any program, we need to compare. Uh, if we need uh, to compare two algorithms, uh, the best thing is to analyze their complexity. Okay. How much resources uh, they are taking? So if, if we are given to implement something, uh, the algorithm which takes less resource is often regarded as a better algorithm. Okay, so if, if your code is taking, uh, if your uh, logic is taking uh, lesser time and space than some other logic, then it is obviously better. So uh, that's why uh, complexity analysis is such an important part. Because uh, for when you solve a problem, there could be multiple approaches. Now, which approach is better can be decided by uh, analyzing their time and space complexity. So uh, in computer, <coughs> these are only two main resources, time and space. <coughs> Sorry. So. Uh, when we talk about space, basically we, uh, what we mean is uh, the space that uh, your program is going to take in your uh, RAM. Okay. So uh, when we uh, analyze uh, the algorithm, basically uh, the method of analyzing remains same in both these cases. So we don't need to discuss uh, uh, time and space, uh, like specifically both of them, we can just uh, uh, discuss the general ap approach of uh, analyzing algorithms, right? So let's start. So uh, I would basically tell you about uh, different ways of analyzing algorithms. Uh, so in theoretical computer science, there are basically two method okay asymptotic and amortized you don't need to know about this okay uh, because you won't be needing much uh, amortized analysis you just need to know about asymptotic analysis and this is also further divided into three parts okay in competitive programming uh, like these are important when you uh, study theoretical computer science, but you don't need to know about this. Okay, so uh, let's cut it out. And here also we have uh, three types of notations that we use to analyze complexity. Uh, the first one is, uh, is called big O. The second one is big omega. And the third one is 
cosec theta. Sorry, uh, there isn't any big here. Pardon. So, uh, okay. So here also, uh, these two are not so important. We will just focus on this, okay? Because this is the most important part. Uh, when you would be solving problems, you just need to focus about uh, the big O of uh, the function that is uh, describing your time complexity. So, uh, sorry. Let's just uh, not define what is time complexity. So uh, time complexity is nothing but a function that uh, describes the amount of time that your uh, program is going to take. Okay. So whatever uh, this function is, the time taken will be always directly proportional to this function. So the uh, greater the value of this function, greater will be the time taken by your program. All right. So, so now uh, let's see. Uh, for example, if we if we if we have input size uh, as n, okay. Okay. Uh, forget about it now. Uh, uh, simply speaking this function gives us the number of instructions that your code is performing. So if we have 10 lines of code uh, written, this means that your uh, code is <coughs> uh, performing uh, 10 instruction. Okay, so <coughs> this function is nothing but this just denotes the number of instructions that your code is performing. <laughs> so the higher number of instructions, uh, the higher will be the time taken by your program, right? So, okay. Now, now let's see, how do we find this function? Now, of, let's suppose, this is our program made up of several uh, set of statements. Here I have some statement, here I have some statement, here I have some statement. Okay. Now, these these all have, like, uh, there are all in total uh, k statements, for suppose. And uh, there are m statements, n statements, and there are uh, l statements. Then the total number of uh, instruction will be k plus m plus l, right? So it is as simple as that. You just have to count the number of instruction, but uh, counting number of instruction is not uh, really that simple. Like you have, you will have several loops inside your uh, code. For example, uh, this is a loop that will be executed n times. Uh, this is a loop that will be executed n times. And uh, like this, you have uh, various blocks of code. Okay, now counting these all uh, is not an easy job. Okay, so what we do, we just take an approximation in terms of this function. The function that I define, for example, uh, this is our function denoting the number of instruction that uh, your code is performing, then we just <coughs> approximate this function to some value and that value ensures that this function will never grow bigger than that. Okay, so <coughs> that's what uh, basically big O of n is. So big O of any function is the upper bound. Okay upper bound of that function. What upper bound means is, for example, uh, with n, here you have n, and here you have uh, the number of uh, instructions on the y-axis. Now, for suppose, uh, this is the f of n. Okay, now, 
the upper bound for this can be something like this. Uh, let's suppose we have something like this. Okay, now this is the upper bound. This means this is O of F of N. Okay, so what this means is this ensures, this lines ensures, this lines, this line ensures that your f of n will never grow bigger than this after this n naught. Okay, so after uh, this point, your function will never grow larger than this. So this is what big O of n is. So big O of a function gives us an upper bound or an approximation that our function can never grow bigger than this. So uh, let's suppose we have uh, an array, okay. The size of uh, the array is n. Now, uh, if we are iterating through each element of the array, now, we are performing n instructions, right? So the uh, iteration, the cost of iteration or uh, the function which describes uh, this will be something like f of n equals n because we are uh, performing n iterations, right? So as I told, f of n is nothing but uh, the number of iterations or the number of instructions, sorry, that you are performing, okay? So for suppose uh, the in input, we have uh, an array of this size, okay? Now this will be provided by the user and uh, your code uh, will run uh, for this number of time. So how to, uh, how to find big O of N? I would be, in, uh, okay. Now, for example, you have uh, your function something like this. F of n is equal to something like n cube plus 16 n square plus 5 n plus something k. Okay, now finding big O of n is uh, big O of f of n is really very simple. You just, what you just need to do, do is like, you, we know that uh, this this will be always lesser than n cube plus 16 n cube plus 5 n cube plus k n cube, isn't it? And this is equal to, if you take n cube as common, then 16 plus 5, that is 21 plus 22, 22 plus k, n cube, okay. Now big O of f of n is nothing but if this value 22 plus k is very less than n cube, then you just disregard this constant, okay. Now big O of f of n will be n cube. Now you know that, <coughs> now this is kind of an upper bound. This is an upper bound of the function. And we have approximated this to be this, n cube. Okay, now you can uh, view this in uh, some uh, different way. Like for example, n is very large. Uh, n is something like 10 to the power uh, six. Now n cube, plus n square, uh, plus 16 n square plus five n, okay. 16 n square plus five n plus k. That would be uh, something like 10 to the power 18 plus 16 into 10 to the power 12 plus five into 10 to the power six plus k. Now 10 to the power 18 is really very large if uh, in comparison to this. 
isn't it? So uh, we can ignore this and we can just uh, take O of, uh, sorry, 10 to the power 18 as uh, approximately the number of instructions that your code is going to perform. So this was all about uh, upper bound. Upper bound means uh, big O of f of 10. I hope it was clear. Uh, now here, what is uh, k? k is constant and n is a variable. Variable means <coughs> n, is, n will be provided by the user or, depend, or n is the size of the input and k is constant. Now uh, let's take an example that, uh, for example, here I have some uh, some lines written. There are k lines. This is constant, and <coughs> the size of the input is, uh, for example, n. Okay. Now here I have uh, some lines, and <laughs> this takes approximately n square. Here I have some lines. This is also some constant that is, this was K1 and this is some constant K2. Here I have some lines and this is uh, something like N. Okay, and this is your whole code. Okay. Now, <coughs> if we need to find the complexity or a big O of uh, this algorithm, so, we can just see that that will be n square because for larger value of n as n is very large uh, for example 10 to the power 5 or something uh, n square will be uh, very large than n or n square will be very large than k1 or k2 so this oh, sorry this can be disregarded in comparison to n squared. And thus, uh, we can say that uh, the number of instructions, the maximum number of instructions will be approximately equal to n squared. And the time <coughs> that your code will take will be proportional to n squared. Okay. So now, uh, now let's suppose uh, you have size of, uh, you have an array of uh, n that was the input. Now, as, as I told you that uh, iterating one time will take, uh, you, have, you will have to perform n operations. You will have to uh, keep on checking each cell. So you will be performing n operations. So you will write uh, something like a loop. And in this loop, uh, you are going to like iterate over this. So this total loop will take O of n. Okay, now if, we, if you have, uh, uh, for example, five loops like this, then uh, the total instruction is going to take, is going to be uh, five n. Plus, uh, you will be having some extra lines, for example, the method declaration, the uh, variable declaration. So those will those are going to take some constant time. So we uh, will just uh, keep it as C. Now, 5 is uh, really small. If n is very large, then you can ignore 5 <coughs> in comparison to n. And C is uh, also very small because uh, the number of uh, variables is that you are going to declare is not going to be like uh, 10 to the power 5 or uh, even close to n okay so the com uh, the big o of this f of uh, sorry o of 5n plus c is equal to n so i hope this was uh, clear how to uh, denote or how to find big O of n. Okay, uh, then, then we have, let's see. 
for example if we have uh, some k lines written here some n lines written here and in this n lines i have something like uh, uh, this block which takes something like uh, log of n okay so <coughs> then uh, okay so it's uh, okay fine uh, now if we know that this log of n will be uh, executed n times okay so k plus log of n plus uh, this will be something like n times so this will be equal to k plus n log n so basically speaking uh, in simple terms uh, complexity is nothing but the number of instructions that your code is going to take uh, okay now i guess everything i have covered um, so i talked about time and space so whatever <laughs> methods we have uh, seen for uh, analyzing time complexity everything uh, applies to the space complexity as well for example uh, uh, if we are creating a, an array of size n then it is going to take something order of n space <laughs> okay now <clears throat> talking about online judges or uh, in each problem you will uh, be having uh, some time limit and space limit now if the <clears throat> time limit is something like uh, one second or two second then then uh, that denotes that uh, your code should not uh, take more than one second or two second whatever it is to uh, run for all the test cases and uh, space limit will be something like 256 mb or uh, something like that so the same applies to the space limit that your code should not take uh, <coughs> more than this, uh, whatever it is there, uh, more than this space, okay. So I have uh, something here. You can see that <coughs> uh, for various values of N, we have a worst case uh, algorithm that we can afford to have. For example, like uh, I was talking about uh, 1 million or 1 million or 10 to the power 5, then for that uh, you can go up till until uh, n log n. Okay. And if you, if you have something like uh, n really small, less than n, then you can go till n to the power 4. If you have n less than 400, then you can go until n to the power 3. And yeah, so you uh, in each question you will be seeing some constraint. So those constraints will be something like this: uh, the <coughs> size of n will be given to you in constraint, and uh, that that is going to be helpful for you to choose the worst time complexity that you can afford. I hope it is clear. Anyone has a doubt, please, uh, until now, please ask in the chat box. Yeah, you can raise your hand or uh, ask in the chat box.
feel free to ask your doubts. I didn't cover much of theoretical aspects because uh, you won't be needing uh, much of it. You just need to know uh, how to like <coughs> find uh, the big O of uh, your function, big O of your uh, algorithm. And that's not very complex task. <coughs> Sorry. We already took a session on complexity analysis. Like uh, in that we talked about, uh, we talked about all the theoretical stuff. So uh, I would be posting it in the chat box. Yeah, you won't be needing uh, much of uh, it like uh, uh, you won't be needing uh, theta notation or <coughs> omega notation. You will be just needing big O of n because this denotes uh, the worst time complexity. Okay, means uh, not the worst time complexity, but the upper bound of the <coughs> of the function. Okay. Do you have any doubt? Uh, if you have, feel free to raise hand. Okay. So I assume that you don't have any doubt. Great. So next we'll move to fast IO. Uh, that is it has, yeah, someone, yeah. someone has raised the hand. See. Sorry. Uh, how do I see? Okay. Yeah, someone has uh, Rahul. Yeah. You can unmute yourself, can you? Uh, now he can, I guess. Rahul, can you uh, unmute yourself? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, don't what call doubt me, sir. Is that you can, you can I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. So what I, what I don't understand is what is actually n? Like what do you mean yeah, when you say yeah. that okay. n is yeah. less than okay, equal to it. 400 or less than got 10k? It, got, it. got it, I got it. Okay, so. <laughs> Uh, n is basically the size of the input. Okay. What I mean by size of input is, for example, uh, in any of the test case, uh, you have an array. You just, uh, for example, you just need to search for an element in an array. Okay. You are given an array of size n, of, for example, size 10 means that you have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I hope there are 10 blocks now. Okay. Now, oh, for example, you have three here, 10 here, 13, 15, 100, one, nine, Eight, eighty-seven, and six. Okay. Now <coughs> you have uh, that. Your task is to find whether a particular element, for example, uh, thirteen, is present in this array or not. Now, this uh, the size of the array is uh, basically n. Means uh, like. Here we have 10 elements. This means uh, here n will be equal to 10. Now you need to uh, iterate through every element to check whether it is equal to 13 or not, right? First you will uh, go to three 
and you will check whether three is equal to 13 or not. No, it is not. So you will go to 10 and you will check whether it is equal to 13 or not. You will go to, <coughs> then you will go to 13 and yeah, it is equal to 13. So <coughs> you will uh, terminate your program there, right? Now, <coughs> sorry. Now similarly, uh, if we have, uh, if we need to find, if we need to check uh, 13 is present or not, and in test case, you have something like this. There are 100 elements. Okay. You don't need about, you don't know about uh, the input that you will be provided, right? Input uh, size can be something like uh, 100 or uh, there can be 10 to the power five, elements that you are given and you need to search uh, a particular element for x, uh, for example, x, right? So this is uh, given by user or this is given by, uh, given in the test uh, test case. You don't uh, know beforehand what will be uh, the size of the array, right? So this, uh, is basically the size of the input. I hope I am clear this time. First, the size uh, was 10, then uh, the size was 100, then the size can be anything like 10 to the power five or 10 to the power three, uh, uh, the number of elements that you have in your array. Okay. I just took an example of uh, searching Another example can be like uh, sorting an array. You have <coughs> an array of uh, size n, and you need to sort it, and you need to print the output. Uh, print the output after sorting. So here, uh, the size of the array will be n. Okay. Another example can be something like. Uh, you have an a string of, for example, S I M E E T. Okay. Now you need to check whether uh, T is present in this string or not. So what you will do, you will uh, check first character, second character, third character, and you will keep keep on doing it until you find T or you reach end of the string. You will keep doing it. <laughs> So here, the uh, number of uh, instruction that you are going to perform is is uh, proportional to, not proportional, but uh, will depend upon the size of n. Uh, sorry, the size of the string. And the size of the string is, uh, here it is six, and this is the size of the input. So by n, I mean the size of the input. Okay, I hope uh, this was clear. Yes, it's clear. Any, yeah. Any more questions? Please raise your hand or uh, ask in the chat box. Okay, I saw. Generally in contest, the time limit is given. So how to understand whether our problem will fit in that time frame? Sorry, uh, how to understand whether our problem will fit in that frame? Uh, I didn't get your question like that. Can you unmute and ask? Yeah, time limit is given. So how to understand whether our problem will fit in that time frame? Uh, basically, you are given an, given a problem, and you what you are asked is to write code to solve that problem. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. Okay. The approach that we are using okay 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 so 
I I so for for example, like uh, in constraints, you have something like uh, ten to the power five. Okay. Now what you do is uh, when you write your algorithm, you and you keep uh, checking or like you ensure that uh, the code isn't going to uh, be uh, isn't going to take any larger complexity than this and log n. Okay. Uh, like <laughs> this is really helpful. This chart uh, when <laughs> you will be given the size of the input something like and is something like this, then you know that your code should not take greater than n log n, or if this, uh, uh, or if the size of input is something like 10,000, 10, then your code <coughs> should not uh, take uh, more than n square. If the time limit, this is valid for time limit uh, approximately equal to uh, <coughs> one or two second. Okay. If the time limit is one or two seconds and the size of the input is uh, 10,000 10, or 1 million, then you need to ensure that uh, whatever you write should not take more than uh, n square or n log n, whatever it is. See, uh, in one second, uh, You app, uh, the code, app, uh, the compiler or the judge approximately performs 10 to the power 8 operations. Okay. Or 10 to the power 8 uh, instructions. So if the size of uh, input is something like 10 to the power 8, and you know that. Uh, <coughs> uh, you know that in one second, approximately 10 to the power eight instructions are performed. This I'm talking about C++. And in Python, it is approximately 10 to the power seven, if I'm not wrong. Uh, this can vary, like uh, this can be 10 to the power nine and this can be 10 to the power eight. I'm not sure about it, but uh, this is approximate figure, okay. So you know that uh, the uh, if you have constraint like something like n is something like 10 to the power 8. Okay. And you have time limit as one second. Then uh, you must uh, ensure that your algorithm or your approach should not take greater than, should not take greater than n. I mean, yeah, O of n. Okay. Because you can uh, only perform uh, 10 to the power 8 operations in one second. So that's what you do in uh, when you analyze an algorithm. You just find its complexity. Yeah. Computer can take 10 to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Al has, uh, Suhail has answered it uh, very correctly. Thank you, Suhail. Okay, now let's move to uh, fast input output. That is not, <coughs> that is really a small part. Like uh, in, I would be talking about how to, uh, uh, how to use this uh, fast input output in uh, C++. Uh, Rajesh will be talking about how to use this in uh, Python. Okay, because I generally code in C++ and Rajesh codes in uh, Python. So uh, now you, uh, we know that uh, we take, we can take input uh, using, you must be fam uh, familiar with a scanner or printf. Okay, now <laughs> these two are fastest to take input. Another method is seen or see out. Uh, okay. So uh, the, these are a bit slow. So if you are using a scanner or printer, 
you don't need to do anything you are uh, fine with it <coughs> but uh, scanf and printf uh, like taking inputs uh, is uh, quite like uh, complicated okay in both like uh, i have seen people taking input uh, but i don't personally like it i i personally prefer uh, see in and see out okay these are uh, more convenient way to uh, print output and print input so uh, if you are using this then you just need to include these lines in your uh, main method or your code okay and this will ensure that input and output are fast enough for these two if you are using scanf or printf you don't need to really do anything if you are using scene and see out scene and see out are uh, a bit slow so make sure that you include these lines in your main function at the top of your main function so you you don't need to know much about uh, what exactly these do you just uh, uh, copy this blindly and paste it there okay another uh, few useful thing that i would be telling is i uh, i personally use a uh, sublime text as id and uh, in competitive coding uh, these macros can be really useful if you are coding in uh, c++ okay so i would recommend you to use this for example like we have a method like pushback okay so i have defined uh, pb uh, so whenever i need to use pushback i just need to like if i have something like variable s and i don't need to write uh, pushback as a whole or i can just write pb okay so here pb will be replaced by this when when it will be compiled so this really helps a lot so i would uh, recommend you to uh, use macros another thing that i would recommend is like uh, i have uh, a setup like this like uh, here i <coughs> provide all my input when i uh, when i compile it uh, all the outputs are uh, generated there so everything <coughs> i have in the same window so it is really helpful i don't need to like a uh, close window compile and then check uh, input and output every time okay another thing uh, that i would recommend you in if you are using sublime text then uh, if you are not using then uh, uh, like uh, whatever you are comfortable with like if you are comfortable comfortable in vs code then you can keep using vs code i i personally like sublime text so i use this uh, for example uh, if i need to uh, use uh, anything uh, any snippet okay any snippet of the code so i have uh, already written uh, many of uh, the snippets and saved it okay so for example i need function of something like uh, this join set that is a data structure you can you will learn it later so like what i do is i just type bhu here i have some recommendation and i just click it and here uh, whatever functions i have pre written and saved it in snippets <coughs> they all come here okay so i don't need to write these uh, lines or these code every time or uh, like i can uh, like i have made my own like uh, snippets so you can uh, you can also uh, make like these like uh, write these write your own snippet and <coughs> use it later so i think i have <coughs> covered everything yeah so you can just uh, search on google how to uh, 
how to write snippets in sublime text okay so uh, now rajesh would be taking over if you don't have any doubts okay i'll post this in the chat box you just need to <laughs> include these these lines in your <laughs> main method to implement fast io that's all and yeah we talked about snippets input output methods so for input output i have something like uh, this i told you like here i provide all my input and whenever i compile uh, all the output is uh, shown here so yeah i'll just uh, recommend you to google how to use uh, sublime text so yeah so rajesh you can take over now i'll stop presenting uh, thank you sumit hello everyone uh, i am rajesh from department of computer science and technology second year uh, i'm from iisd shipur so you all can hear me right uh, you can write in the chat anyone can respond yeah, if you can hear me okay okay so you all seen how to take a fast input and output in c++ but some people might use python they might be python lovers also so how they can use this okay i will show you uh, one resource okay so from that you can uh, copy that code and you use that code in your uh, file when you are writing the code so you all can see the screen right i hope so this is a github uh, repository I, i will give this uh, link to you in the chat okay so what you can do is you can just go here in templates and open this first template so this is the fast input output in python you just copy it and uh, whenever you are submitting include it and write the code from uh, below this end region okay include this code after this line 88 so this will work okay uh, wait let me post this link in chat so that you all can use this okay wait so now let us see about the sortings uh first let's talk what is sorting and why it is so important sorting means arranging them in any order okay let's suppose uh, you made a dictionary and you uh, inserted the words in any random order whatever comes to your mind you just inserted at the end of this dictionary and the dictionary has a 1000 or 1500 words so suppose you want to find a meaning of a, sub, a particular word then what you do you have to search each and every page right because you don't know where it is uh let's take this case suppose you sorted that in lexicographical order what is lexicographical order that is alphabetical order uh you placed all the words that start with a at the starting and then all the words that start i mean that started with b so if you do that uh, you know your word so uh, you know the first letter you can just go that there and you will search it you will find it so this is the use of sorting uh, while doing cp in some problems you may require to sort the input that you are given like if you are given an array uh, if you sort it you will get the solution in easy way like in an efficient way uh every problem has some brute force method but uh, in cp we don't have to uh, use cp i mean brute force so some problems require sorting so today we are going to see this bubble sort and then selection sort insertion sort merge sort quick sort and let's take some problems like two problems from uh, cp at uh, the basic one and we have some beginners also so i took some basics basic problems here uh, which uses sorting so that you can understand why the sorting is important 
but uh, while you are writing the code you don't implement any of these algorithms uh, let me say this uh, you just use sort function that is given in uh, c++ or python sort function is built in so just use that and <clears throat> you will get the sorted one right but you uh, this uh, uh, by learning these methods you will understand some algorithms or some techniques that you can use in while doing cp not exactly in this way but in another way also okay uh, now let's start with the uh, bubble sort first okay let's take a first and unsorted array by the way we are sorting in uh, in these all methods we will be sorting in ascending order okay uh, that means smaller number to uh, bigger number or uh, uh, non decreasing order we will be sorting okay so let's take uh, one array uh, of size 7 so 5 7 1 2 3 4 and 6 okay this is unsorted right this is not in ascending order you all can see it hmm. now how to sort this array using bubble sort and what is bubble sort actually what we do in bubble sort is uh, we will compare adjacent pair of elements if they are in wrong order we will just swap them okay what i'm saying is uh, we will uh, check every two adjacent pair of elements if they are in wrong order we just swap them suppose here uh, 5 7 is in correct order because 5 is smaller than 7 but if you talk about 7 and 1 they're in wrong order so you need to swap them okay uh, so let's do this in a systematic way okay so let's start from this left side of the array and see if any two elements are in wrong order we just swap them okay so 5 7 are in correct order now 7 1 they are in wrong order so i i swap them now this array becomes this great so again now 1 and 7 in correct uh, 1 and 7 is correct order now 7 and 2 they are in wrong order right so i need to swap again these two so what that will become 2 7 3 4 6 great now see from here now our uh, elements are 7 and 3 again this is in wrong order so i need to do this again right so why 1 2 3 7 4 and 6 uh again see this 7 and 4 this is in wrong order again you need to swap it 4 7 and 6 again see check this 7 and 6 they are in wrong order wrong order means like first element is greater than the second one even if they are equal we don't mind because uh, wrong order is in the uh, decreasing order but we want to sort in non decreasing order so that is the thing okay uh, so we completed uh, one iteration of this complete array right so we started at the left and we reached at the right and we did uh, this comparison and swapping okay so what do you observe after one iteration after one iteration the maximum of uh, the whole array comes at the end of this array uh, is this understood like this is clear right like, so the maximum of the whole array comes at the end of the array if you do one iteration of this array so this is the maximum so this is in sorted place so is it necessary to include in the next iteration i don't think so we can skip this part so this is the uh, sorted so we just need to sort uh, these many elements like the six elements after in the next process again do that compare each and uh, two elements if they're in wrong order just swap them so first five and one they're in wrong order right so one five uh, two three four six uh, i'm skipping the seven because uh, seven is in already in sorted order uh, what happens now again five and two they're in wrong order so that will become this great now five and three again that is in wrong order so i again need to swap it so again one one two three and these are in wrong order so i just swap it and five and six they're in correct order so i i'm not swapping them okay so after that the maximum again at the last so we can skip this one now we can do this thing uh, fortunately the, our array is sorted uh, in second step only but this is not the case uh, and we take a general i mean array okay here uh, our array is sorted after two iterations 
uh, but when we can guarantee our array will be sorted if we do this i mean in how many times we need to do to guarantee that our array will be sorted so if you do this process n minus 1 times uh, in any worst case our array will be sorted okay what is n here uh, n is the size of array size of the array that is given to us uh if we do this process n minus 1 times uh our array will be sorted how why this is so uh after the first iteration the maximum comes here great now this is the array now after the second iteration out of these six elements the maximum comes at this after third the maximum comes here and fourth this five this and six this so this array will be sorted all of them are sorted so obviously and automatically this will be in sorted order if we do this n minus 1 times we can guarantee it uh i think you all can understood this right uh, any doubts in this uh any doubts in this uh, bubble sort or anything you didn't understand and one more thing i need to say after each iteration we will be skipping one one element so the first iteration we will be skipping six after the second iteration we will we will be i mean not six here at the maximum that comes here the seven here and then six comes at the end of the second iteration we will be skipping that six and then whatever comes at the maximum that means after third iteration five comes right that is the maximum remaining so we will skip that five and this way we will do so guys is it understood just reply it or i can i will repeat again or any questions if you have you can ask no one just reply that uh, i don't know that you understood or not okay great so i hope you got it uh let's see this implementation part how we are going to implement it okay okay now i'm just writing the main part of the code not writing the uh, whole code here so for i'm taking for loop so for loop variable is i i'm starting at uh, zero and i'm going to till n minus 1 because uh, we need to do that process till n minus i mean uh, n minus 1 times right so you can say uh, i less than n minus 1 okay so i am starting at i is equal to 0 i'm doing this process till n minus 1 times okay and now for j is equal to 0 to uh, j less than n minus i so why it is so in the first step what is the value of i the first step i is equal to 0 right so in the first step i mean when the initial array is given i am not leaving any elements at the end i will be considering the whole array so here i will be zero so the j will go from starting position to the last element of the array j is uh, less than n means j goes to n minus 1 you all know the array indices starts from 0 to n minus 1 that is why i am not taking the equality here so after the first iteration what happens uh, our i will become 1 so j will become n minus 1 that means we will be skipping one element at the end so after the second iteration uh, the n will become 2 so we will be skipping that many elements in this way i'm doing okay you all got this now here what i'm doing uh here i made a mistake if i took this as 1 that will be good because uh i have indices right suppose hmm i'm i want to compare these two elements i mean the first two elements so i can do this array j and array j plus 1 in this way i can compare or arr j minus 1 and arr j in this way i can compare uh if i start with the one so i am i am at this point so i can compare arr j and arr j minus 1 again i am going here and i will compare arr j and arr j minus 1 so compare them what is the wrong order if they are in uh, like decreasing order okay if arr j 
e is greater than a r r j minus one, and then what you do is swap the both. Okay, what I'm doing, uh, I'm taking two adjacent uh, adjacent elements. If they are in wrong order, I'm just swapping. Okay, so after completion of all the steps, uh, we will get our resultant array. If uh, it is a function, so we need to return that array. Okay, or else uh, we have. I mean, if it is the main program, so we will have a sorted array. That means array is sorted. So implementation part is also okay, right? uh the main things you need to understand here is why this is n minus 1 i mean n minus i and why this is starting from 1 and whenever i am swapping got it right any questions uh great great now you can reply it uh, i mean i completed this uh, okay cool Double sort is understood now. So let's go to now selection sort. By the way, you can raise your hand if you have any questions, uh, so that we can allow your mic and you can ask that. Okay. Okay. Uh, I skip that complexity of bubble sort. Can anyone guess what is the complexity of this bubble sort that we just implemented? Can you tell that I and J part? Okay, wait. Ah, uh, I will be going to that. So see. Ah, uh, you understood that process, right? Ah, uh, we will iterating through the array. If any two elements are in wrong order, we are just swapping it. So you understood that point. How many times we need to do this operation to that array? We need to do that operation n minus one times. To that array, and why n minus one? That is also I explain because after each step, ah, uh, one element is sorted. So after each step, we can skip one one element. Okay, here, ah, uh, we are starting from zero to n minus one. Ah, uh, we can start from one to ah, uh, like when we want to do it n minus one times, right? So we can start from i is equal to one to i less than one. You can also do this, but for Implementation purpose, like for here, this purpose, I'm taking from i is equal to zero, and I'm going to n minus one times y n uh, i less than n minus one. So, <coughs> why I'm starting from j is equal to one, so that I can compare that element and the previous element. I can I can index right, so uh, a r at j and a r at j minus one, so that I I can compare. Okay, if I take j is equal to zero, what happens? A r j minus one becomes a r minus one. Ah, uh, if you are using C plus plus, that will be compilation error. Or if you are using Python, that will take a last element. You know, in Python, we will have negative indexing. So, suppose ah uh, this is the array. Minus one refers to the this element. Minus two refers this element. So this will compare the first element and the last element. Okay, that is why we are starting from one, so that a r r j minus one will become a uh, zero. Great, and we are comparing uh, comparing the a r r one and a r r zero. Okay, why this n minus one n minus i is in the first iteration? That means when i is equal to zero, n minus i is equal to n, right? Uh, that means j less than n in the first iteration. So I am going to the end of the array. Okay. And after the first iteration, the i will become one. So n minus i is equal to n minus one. So I am going j less than n minus one. So I am skipping the last element of the array because that is in the correct position. I hope now you got it. Uh, I and j. What is the need of that, and what is why it is starting from one? Hmm. Uh, shouldn't the outer loop uh, run till i less than n minus one? Okay, see, see this thing. <laughs> Suppose we have a zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, how many elements are this? N is equal to five. Okay. Uh, 
Sub, so in for this array, suppose uh, you need to do the process four times. Okay. So for four times means uh, n is equal to five. If you do i less than n, that means it will do uh, uh, zero, one, two, three, and four. So it it is doing five times, right? If you take i less than n, it is doing five times. So if you take i is less than n minus one, that means i less than four. It is only taking zero, one, two, and three. So it is doing four times. That is what we require. That's why uh, we made it i less than n minus one. If you made it equal, that means uh, in this case i can take the value of four also. So that will become uh, five times. So that we are doing unnecessarily. That will cause the loss, losing of efficiency. Okay. Okay. N square. N square, yeah, complexity is correct. N square, N square, N square. Great. Uh, here, error j is less than error j, then we have to stop. Yes, yes, great. Okay, this is N square. Why? Because um, this first for loop runs n times, I mean, not exactly n times, n minus one times. And this uh, first, I mean, this inner for loop. In the first step, it is running uh, n time n minus one times after n minus two after n minus three in this way. Uh, so if you all can add this up from n minus one to one, so that will become uh, n square, right? Uh, that means you all know from sum of first n minus one numbers that is n minus one into n by two, so that is becomes n square because you you will have a square term here. So you got it right. Why? Uh, I have written reverse. Uh, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. This I got. I wrote reverse. Thanks, Prasad. This is. They should be incorrect, right? If the. Uh, I mean, previous element is greater than the present element. Then I am swapping. Correct, correct. My bad. Sorry, sorry. Okay. So bubble sort. I hope you all got it. So I can I move to the uh, selection selection sort. Okay. Okay. Do let's do this. Ah, uh, in bubble sort, we are doing a lot of swaps, right? Uh, like that is order of n square, and we are doing so many, so many swaps. But in selection sort, we can improve the number of swappings. Okay, what we can do is we can improve the number of swappings. Suppose mm, you have an array. Okay, I'm taking again uh, unsorted array for one, two, six. Three, four, and five. Uh, let's take this array. Uh, in this place, what element have to be there? The smallest of the whole array should be there here, right? Okay. So what I'm doing is in the first process, I will be finding the minimum of this whole array, and I will be swapping that with the seven. Uh, okay. For this purpose, just interchange these elements. Okay. So that we can understand this better. Uh, Two and one. Suppose this is the array. Now, what is the minimum of whole array? That is one, right? This is the minimum. Now, I am swapping this one and seven. Okay. So this element is sorted now. Uh, one element is sorted correctly. Great. Now again for this array, let me do this again. What is the minimum of these six elements? I think that is two, and that is in correct position. So we know we don't need to swap anything. So that is. Cool. This is also sorted. Now uh, let's do this for uh, last five elements again. What is the minimum of this last five elements? That is three, I suppose. Okay. And now let's swap this seven and uh, three. So that will become again three, six, seven, four, and five. So again, this element is also sorted now. Let me do this for these four elements. What is the minimum of this? That is four. 
okay so i am just swapping four and this first element that is 4765 now this is the first element what is the minimum that is 5 so i just swap 7 oh, okay sorry 5 6 and 7 okay now this is also correct order now out of this what is the smallest 6 so that is in correct order and 7 is also in correct order now what is the uh, what is our array 1 2 3 this is here 4 and 5 6 and 7 so finally our array is sorted you understood this algorithm right i mean right what we are doing here so we are finding the minimum of this and we are swapping with the first element okay so in every iteration we are only doing one swap right but in bubble sort we are doing a lot of lot of swaps that may uh, uh, cause the losing of efficiency okay is this correct i mean is is this understood uh this selection sort yeah great great by the way you all know how to find the maximum and minimum of array right i think you all can know how to find the maximum and minimum of an array that is given to us super okay uh let us implement this thing like uh, write pseudo code for this we are starting from first element uh, we have to do this uh, till the last element suppose this is the array that is given to us if if these are all in the correct place uh, automatically this will be in correct place correct so we don't need to do that process this for this again right we can do this only uh, n minus 1 times so again here also for i is equal to 0 to i less than n minus 1 uh, this thing you got it right from i is equal to 0 i am going till i less than n minus 1 why it is so because we don't need to do this process for the last element okay now <coughs> now here comes how do you find the minimum of an array uh what you do is you assume that the first element is the minimum and check uh, is there any element that is less than this first element in that array or not then you can get the minimum right so you are assuming the first element is the minimum or the minimum index so let's take minimum is the first element that is the i that we are here now uh for j is equal to i plus 1 to uh j less than n okay if any element if error j is less than the error minimum then what we are doing is we are as, uh, assigning minimum to that index okay okay uh what we are doing is in the first array the first step i am considering the first element is the minimum that is the uh, in the first step i is equal to 0 right so minimum will be 0 then i am starting from j is equal to i plus 1 so i am starting from this element this first element i am going to the end of this element i am going till the end of this array right and i am checking if this any error j is less than our minimum present minimum so i am assign, assigning that minimum to that j okay suppose uh, we have here 5 and we have here 3 so first uh, initially uh, minimum is 0 that is the minimum index is 0 whenever this loop comes here this is a smaller than our minimum so what happens is so minimum will become this is the index 2 right so minimum will become 2 correct so at the after completion of this for loop we will have uh, our minimum index that means the index that is containing the minimum element okay uh now what we need to do we need to swap that so swap this present element that is the i here are i and here are minimum okay great so after first step the minimum comes this first place after the second step out of these elements the minimum comes here so in this way we will get our answer 
i hope it's clear implementation also right is this okay can anyone reply me or any questions you can ask if you have or anything you didn't understand the selection yeah guys reply please is this understood or not so that i can move you can go I'll go to the insertion sort okay let uh, i open it so now you can answer i mean you can ask the question sorry pl okay we got it then let's move to this in session sort so here you can also learn how to find the maximum and minimum of an array from here to here i am doing that only okay so you can use that uh let's do the in session sort now how many of you know how to insert an element in the array so do you know how to insert if an element is given do you know how to insert in the previous array guys i think you all know yes great 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 okay see as always we have to take unsorted array and we need to sort it okay let me use different color mm, six one two seven five and eight this is unsorted now we need to sort this array uh an array with single element is always sorted that is always known truth suppose uh, you have given an array with the one element so no element is larger than that element and no element is smaller than that element so that is always sorted with single element one so this uh, suppose we have only this one element six so this is sorted okay now we have a new element one now we need to insert this one in this sorted array okay so where that will come that will come 1 6 and now we have 2 7 and 5 8 so this is sorted now we have another new element that is 2 so we need to insert this 2 in this sorted array okay where that is that will be in between 1 and 6 right so 1 2 6 and we have 7 5 8 Okay, so now we have another new element that is seven. Okay, so we need to insert this seven in this again sorted array that places the last after six, right? So one, two, six, seven, and we have five and eight. Now another new element. So again, we need to sort. I mean, insert it in this sorted array. This is sorted always. Okay, so that means one, two, five, six, seven, and the last element is 8 so the last element this again we need to insert it here so that will become 1 2 5 6 7 and 8 so finally we got our sorted array i think the algorithm is correct right and what i'm doing you all understood right i mean what i'm doing here uh what is the way to sort another way to sort by the name come insertion here because we are inserting into the sorted array each and every time that's why this name of the algorithm is insertion sort uh now let's see how to insert it i just uh, we as a human we can just find a place and we just insert it but how to tell insert a uh, computer where to insert that element suppose mm, okay 1 to 6 7 is there we need to insert 3 the new element is 3 so this is the case let's consider this case and we need to insert 3 what is the position of 
the position of three is uh, after the element that is after the first element that is smaller or equal to the three. Am I? I mean, am I uh, meaningful? That means he is this clear? The place of this three is the first and uh, first position uh, that is after the element that is smaller or equal to this three. That means compare seven and three. This uh, like seven is not smaller than three, so swap them. Okay, six, two, one. Okay, now compare six and three. So again, six is greater than three. So one, two, three, six, seven. Uh, next, compare three and two. Okay, they are in correct order. So this is the perfect fit place for it. This is how we we are going to insert each and every time. Okay, is this insertion is also okay, right? Uh, like normally we can insert, but how to uh, implement while writing the program? Just find a place or to find a suitable place for that, and just insert. Or you can say. uh after the first element that is a uh, smaller or equal to the inserting element uh please remember this point so in this way we are uh while doing cp you may face a lot of situations where you need to uh, insert an element in a sorted list or sorted uh, string okay or in the normal uh, while you learning data structures and algorithms uh, this comes i mean a lot of times like insertion in a sorted way okay is this okay if it is okay uh, then i can uh, show you the implementation thing right 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 okay so i will go to the implementation part now so for again i is equal to 0 to Mm. n minus one or i less than n minus one. Okay. Uh, now, what we what we are going to do is let's take this array to understand this algorithm better. Okay. Now, uh, what is the first element that I am going to insert? This is the second element. I am starting from this element, and I am going to insert all these element in the uh, I mean this sorted array, right? Okay. So mm. first, I need to consider these two elements, right? For j is equal to zero to uh, j less than. Mm. if i start this with uh, two or what if i start with this two what happens j starts with zero two j goes till one right because uh, j less than two okay now uh, compare the pre elements if here are j and here are j minus one if they are in wrong order we are going to swap that right We're going to swap that Sorry. If they're in wrong order, means what happens? Uh, the previous element is larger than the present element, and I'm going till this point. Greater than or uh, zero, and after each time, I'm decreasing j minus minus. Okay, I corrected few points. So what I'm basically doing is, uh, after the third step, our I will be here. Okay, I need to 
check from this point to this thing and that means we are going from uh, right to left that is why i am going from j is equal to i to j greater than uh, equal to 0 that means till this last point right but what happens if i take j is equal to 0 again that comes here are 0 minus 1 that that part comes that's why i took only uh, j greater than 0 starting from my 2j greater than 0 if they are in wrong order uh, what i need to do to swap them okay here are j and here are j minus 1 okay and i i will be doing this uh, j j minus minus now let us see this must sort uh before going how many of you are lazy like me hello guys how many of you are lazy <laughs> okay roshan is lazy than me everyone okay myself so no one wants to do their work by themselves everyone wants to give their work to others right so uh suppose we are given this list 6 3 1 5 7 8 uh let me uh, let us take eight elements now this time 2 and 4 okay uh a person is given this work to me sort this array so i am lazy so i am dividing this array into two parts with four and four elements i am giving this array to my friend one of my friend let's say a and this to another friend b asking them to sort it okay by the way after uh, sorting a and b give their uh, respect to sorted arrays to me and i will uh, like merge the two sorted arrays marching to sorted arrays this is the main thing in this algorithm so i will explain this but before going to this part let us see this part okay as i am lazy i am dividing it to two halves and uh, one half is giving to my friend a and another is giving to b and i am asking them to sort and i am asking them to sort so they will give uh, the sorted arrays and then i will add both and i will give to my i mean the one who asked me to sort but what is the thing is everyone is lazy so now a is also lazy b is, b is also lazy they are also dividing their list uh, into two uh, halves so 6 3 1 5 divided that and 7 8 2 4 and he gave to another person c and and the person d he gave to e and he gave to f okay like me they also know how to uh, merge two sorted arrays that's why they given so this c and d will uh, sort and give to this a and he will merge and merge and they, he will give to me here also e and f will sort these two elements and merge this b and b will merge and he will give to me and finally i will also merge again this c d e and f also lazy so all people are lazy so they are also dividing into two halves so 6 3 1 5 7 8 2 so and so now they also given to respect to their two friends and when they gave to their respect to friends their friends shouted on them because what are you doing uh, you are giving me one element array and sort how do mad this one element array is always sorted is that is that right i mean this one element array is always sorted correct so when uh, c gives this one one element to their friends they have written back to c as it is and now what c will do he will uh, merge these two sorted arrays individually 6 is a sorted array individually 3 is a sorted array now c will merge these two okay 3 and 6 and d also merge these two and e also merge these two and f also merge these two okay what happens after merging okay uh, what is this uh, sorted merging this one 
3 and 6. This sorted merging is 1, 5. And this is 7, 8. And this is 2, 4. Correct. And now C and D will give to A. Okay, now A has these four elements. And B has these four elements. I mean, these four elements. So how A will sort that? What is the sorted array of these two? 1, 3, 5, and 6. What is the sorted here? 2, 4, 7, and 8. Correct. Now A and B will give to me this one and this one. So I again need to merge these two. So what happens then? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So finally, we got our sorted. Right. Is this merge sort understood? That means what we're doing. Can anyone reply me? Is this understood or not? Great. So remember this lazy word. So this is what we are doing in this uh, merge sort. OK. Uh, the main thing is how we are going to merge two sorted arrays. This is the main thing in this. The dividing and giving to others is very easy. But uh, our work is also there now. So we need to sort, I mean, merge two sorted arrays. That is the main thing, how to do that. OK, I need to take the sorted. OK, now let's see. Uh, this is sorted right individually, like these three elements are sorted. These three elements, sort, I mean, these, these four elements are also sorted. Now, what we need to do is uh, we need to merge these two. I'm taking two pointers. One is pointing to the first element of the second array. And this is the first element of the first array. OK, compare these two elements, whichever is smaller. And now this is our resultant array. That is a merged one. OK, I'm going to write here. OK, whichever is smaller, put that here. What is smaller in one and three? That is one, right? So I'm writing it here one. Now move this pointer to here. OK, uh, how this place is correct? This is sorted. So the first element is the minimum of this first array. And the second one is also sorted. So one is the minimum of the second one. So out of these minimum, we are writing minimum. So obviously, in the resultant array, this will be in minimum place. That is obvious. Uh, so that is the proof of this uh, merging. Now, compare this 3 and 2, whichever is smaller, write that here. So 2 and move that here pointer. Compare 3 and 3. OK, so both are equal. You can add anything. So I'm just adding this first one. OK, now the pointer is here. Now. What is the smaller out of five and three? Uh, three is the smaller, so I'm adding three. Now the pointer comes here, but the array is over. That means we have no elements left to compare in this second array. So we can just append these elements at the end of this first, uh, resultant array. So what that becomes? This is the sorted array. Is that okay? That means what we are doing here, how we are, uh, I mean, merging two sorted ones. Got it right? How to merge two sorted arrays? Okay, okay, again, again, I'm doing this. So first of all, what I'm doing is I'm taking three, five, two sorted arrays. This is sorted individually. One, two, three. This is also sorted individually. So I'm taking two pointers. The first pointer is pointing towards the first element of the first array. And the second pointer is pointing to the first element of the second array. OK. And this is the minimum of the first array. And this is the minimum of the second array. Now, out of these two, what will what is the minimum? That is one. So that will be the minimum of our resultant one, right? After the resultant, uh, in the resultant array, the minimum element should be this minimum of these three and one only. So in the resultant, our first element will be 1. So I am moving this uh, as I included this one. So I am moving the this pointer to 2. OK, if I have included 3, I have moved this. I mean, I may have moved this pointer to the forward. 
okay now where are the pointers the first pointer is at 3 second pointer is at 2 okay now compare this 3 and 2 what is the smaller one the smaller one is 2 so i am just including in the resultant and moving that pointer to power okay 3 so 3 and 3 now what is the smaller they are equal so you can include either this 3 or this 3 so i am including this 3 okay so i am moving this pointer to 5 i included 3 Now where are the pointers? The pointers are now at five and three. What is the smaller? The smaller is three. So I'm just including this three and moving the point of power. Okay, but unfortunately our second array got exhausted and we have no elements to compare. And now our job is also become very easy. So there is no elements to compare. So always these elements are smaller. So you can add them at the end of the result. Okay. Suppose the first is over, second is uh, left, then you can add the remaining second list to the end. But in the example that we have taken uh, here, we are left with uh, some elements in the first array, so we just uh, added those three elements to the end of the array. So this array is sorted. See, you can see right one, two, three, three, five, six, seven. This is sorted. Okay. Now I hope you got it. how we are merging two sorted arrays great 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 uh you can use this algorithm uh, in many of the cp problems like this is not uh, i mean here limited to this merge sort this technique using two pointers and comparing them and getting the answer so you can always do this any cp problems this is one of the process that you can do by the way this is called two pointers and uh, you will be learning that also okay in the week 3 uh, uh okay i didn't explain this implementation part i will write only the recursive program of merge sort uh, the task is of, the task of yours is explore how to write the program of two I mean, merging of two sorted arrays. Okay, write by yourself this one. How you can uh, merge two sorted arrays? But uh, I'm going to write this merge sort algorithm. Okay, let me clear this. So merge sort. So merge sort takes uh, inputs. What are the inputs? That is the lower index. okay that is the higher index now what we are doing in this algorithm is so we are finding the minimum of this minimum is sorry minimum i am saying minimum sorry the mid middle of this l plus h by 2 that gives minimum i guess correct if the array is of 6 or uh, 8 elements uh, l will be 0 and h will be 8 okay now 0 plus 8 by 2 gives 4 right so that will give the minimum now what i am doing i am giving to my friend i can do the method uh till what till this l2 middle middle of that now do the method i'm giving to another friend to do from this uh, middle plus 1 to the highest okay now what i am doing again after they much uh, they are sorting their respect to works i am just adding now uh, let me call it as a and let me call it as b merge both uh, a and b and then return the resultant so this is resultant merging a and b and return the resultant okay uh, this is recursion i think you got it this is recursion and what is the ending condition i didn't wrote this ending ending condition so middle is l plus h by 2 okay this method will be going on and on uh, we if we don't uh, mention this uh, ending condition what is the ending condition if you have a one element array that is the last friend who got the one element array is uh, returning to his uh, friend as it is so if l equal to equal to h okay 
sorry i didn't mention the array by the way you need to take the array as input or else how you are going to sort that or uh, return as it is okay is that okay i mean how we are going to write the recursion you all know recursion uh if you don't know the recursion you can learn it from youtube or uh, i mean we have a video in code ist youtube channel you can just watch that how to use recursion so and this is the technique of divide and conquer okay that you are going to learn tomorrow there is a concept of uh, divide and conquer so we are dividing our array and first conquering it conquering it sorting them and we are merging it okay uh and what is the time complexity of this <laughs> sorry i didn't uh, said the time complexity of the previous algorithms actually the uh, selection sort also order of n square and this insertion sort also order of n square and this merge sort is okay this is order of n log n uh how these are coming <laughs> this is a theoretical thing but we are not interested in this cp okay this is a theory if you want you can explore that also just google it you will find how to find the time complexity of these algorithms okay now if you don't know recursion uh i think no divide and conquer always uses divide and conquer i mean sorry in divide and conquer we can only use a recursion okay can't do it without recursion recursion means uh, calling the same function is this okay can anyone reply me so that i can go to the last one uh, that is a quick sort and after the quick sort if you are interested for the problems i can explain or i can give it to you to solve so that is your choice just but let me complete this uh, quick sort okay and try to implement this uh, merge sort because this is very uh, important and you can learn a lot of things from this okay this i i just wrote pseudo code this is not the actual code you you write that syntactically now quick sort here comes two words one is partition and another one is pivot these are the two important words that you need to remember in this quick sort what is partition what is partition is suppose you are given an array and you are given an element okay what you have to do is move the elements that are smaller to the element that we are given suppose we are given an array a and we are given an element x okay now arrange or uh, rearrange this array so that all the elements that are smaller than this element x should be on the left side and all the elements that are equal to this x or greater than this x should be on the right side or you can say uh in this case suppose till this point all the elements that are less than x now these element will be all the elements that are greater than or equal to x this is called partitioning okay partition is of right the concept is clear right what is partition you understood that now uh yes you got it the partition what i mean to say that means all the elements that are smaller should be on the left side all the elements that are equal to or greater than should be on the right side okay that is called partition hmm now how to do the partition uh let me explain with the example so that you all can understood uh what you can um, so 10 suppose i am taking this array hmm uh 8 
this is the array that is given to us now i want all the elements that are less than 10 i mean i am taking the first element okay by the way here this x is called the pivot okay i, I forgot to mention here the element i mean we are uh, partitioning this right so the element that we are choosing is called the pivot sorry this is great so here i am choosing 10 as the pivot that means uh, i want all the elements that are less than 10 should be on the left side all the elements that are greater than 10 should be on the right side okay so take two pointers again as before so one is pointing towards this and uh, one is pointing towards this and move forward till you find an element that is uh, greater than this 10 okay so i am moving moving i found this 12 okay i am just stopped here and then um, move here uh, in this way that means in this way and find an element that is smaller than 10 that is the first element only that is smaller than 10 now swap these two okay what happens if we swap, uh, swap them 6 and 12 now again move forward and find element that is greater than 10 so 15 here we can stop i mean this is this element is greater than 10 now move here and find an element that is uh, smaller than 10 this is the element right now you need to swap these two so this is 8 this is 15 okay now uh sorry we are at here and we are at here and move forward and find an element that is greater than 10 right so i th i think this comes here 15 till 15 so 15 we stopped it here now again find an element that is smaller than this 10 uh, that is here so this is the first pointer let me call it p and this is the second pointer that is q here see uh, they are crossed okay right they are crossed so whenever they cross we don't need to do this process i mean at this stage we can stop this process and what you can do is you just swap this finally final swap this is so 10 and 6 what happens then uh, 6 8 6 8 10 15 20 and 12 now this is the position of q right as before uh, you all can see this All the elements that are smaller to 10 or on the left side, all the elements that are greater than to 10 or on the right side. Okay. Is this okay? Or am I clear? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you are seeing right, I'm not doing any mistake, like uh, interchanging these elements. Okay, I'm explaining you the process, but uh, I may have uh, mistakenly swapped different elements, but I hope so. I hope no. You all understood how to partition this. Uh, yes. Now, after partitioning, this element is in correct place now. Now, you only have to do uh, sort this array and sort this array. Quick sort does that only. So, first quick sort partitions. Uh, that array so it will found uh, an element i mean the index q that that is uh, sorted now then we will swap the rest of the two parts we will skip this element because that is always sort i mean already sorted so that's why we are going to uh, sort these four elements and then these three elements okay again in this four uh, we will choose six as a pivot and partition this again in this we will choose 15 as a pivot and partition this okay after that we will get again a partitioning index here this q is called the partitioning index uh, remember this term also q is called partitioning index because this q only we are skipping okay because we are skipping and we are going we are sorting the other two parts that is why this is called a partitioning index okay so again, we need to um, uh, partition this array and we need to find another queue. Again, suppose here is the queue. Now again, we need to apply quick sort on these two 
we are also suppose this is a partition index uh, this is one element and this is two elements so again we need to do this quick sort for these two elements if one element is there that is uh, that is already sorted you all know by one element one ar element array is always sorted Uh, again, another work for you. Try to implement this partition. Partitioning the array. Uh, explore it by yourself in Google or anywhere. Uh, try to implement with your language like C++ or Python. I know I'm writing here the fix sort algorithm. Okay. Fix sort. Again, takes uh, uh, array as the input because that is what we are going to sort. And the lower index and the higher index. Okay. Now what we are doing is uh, we are partitioning this array. Partition this array. Lower element is L. Higher element, I mean, higher index is H. So partition. What does? Uh, sorry, I mistakenly wrote this spelling. Partition function will return that partition index right uh, as you have seen before. That will return that Q. So that we are storing it here Q. Now you need to again do this quick sort from this uh, lower to Q minus one because that Q is in correct position. You again have to do this quick sort uh, for this Q to the higher index. Again, this is recursion, so you need to mention the uh, ending condition or the terminal condition. Okay, if L equal to equal to H. We don't have to do anything, right? So we can mention this like if L is less than H. If uh, L is equal to equal to H, that means if you have one array, uh, the index is zero. In that case, L equal to equal to H. Okay, we don't have to do that single element sorting anything. So that is uh, if L is less than H. In that case only, that will comes to this uh, block and it will do partition and then fix sort and then fix sort. Okay. At the final, uh, return that. Okay. Return this error because you have sorted this. Is this okay? Hello. This is also, uh, by the way, divide and conquer because we are dividing this array and conquering it. That is why fix sort. Please implement this because you will forget afterwards. Okay, there are different uh, techniques these are to sort, but if you are not implementing them, you don't uh, remember much time. So that's why I'm asking. And whatever uh, like methods that I'm using, so you can always use them in CP because these are not only limited for the sorting one, like the techniques or the uh, methods. Okay, so we have completed the sorting thing. Uh, are you inter interested for problems? I have two problems. So if you are interested, I will explain and uh, we, we can solve it together. Or uh, if you are not in in interested or if you want to do it by yourself, I can just show you. You can take a screenshot and you can try them. What all you say? Problems. Because you already uh, like learned uh, more than five or six algorithms, so I think if you are exhausted or if you <laughs> may not want to, okay, you are interested, Joy Brata. Yes, Smith is saying. Okay, I will show you the problems. You just try uh, by yourself. Uh, only two problems I have. And they are very easy, by the way. Very uh, simple, basic one that involves sorting. I'm uh, giving that clue also. And don't try to implement these sortings, fix sort, more sort. Whenever you, because you are doing CP problems, so you just use built in functions. Okay. Uh, C has a sort function, Python also has a sort function. So use them, not uh, this, any one of the sorting techniques. Great. Uh, if you have any uh, doubt when you are uh, solving, you put them in the Discord channel so we can answer them. And I will also post the links to that problem. Uh, one question I took from CodeChef and one question I took from Code Forces. So I will give the links to both of the problems in the uh, Discord channel so you can submit and uh, check them. Okay. Or if you're stuck, tell me, I will 
explain okay so i'm showing the problems I'll take the screenshot after i will give the link also but okay this is the first problem this from code check by the way take a screenshot of this problem and try it by yourself uh, here you are given a constraint c constraint is uh, array of size that is 10 power 5 that means as seen with explain you are only uh, allowed till order of n okay because uh, the time is given only one second here i didn't uh, i mean took the screenshot of that that is mentioned at the end of the problem the time given is one second so you can maximum apply order of n okay that is what sorry not order of n you can do order of n login also because it's 10 part 5 okay you all took screenshot right Have you took the screenshot? Yes. So I will show you the next problem there. Uh, problem two. This is from code process. Uh, take the screenshot of this. Here, uh, the uh, constraints is very small. That is length of the string does not exceed 52 that means it is only 50 you can implement it any complexity okay have you took the screenshot of this problem so try them i will give the links links also okay okay i will i will send in the discord absolutely So how is the session and have you all find useful this thing? Whatever taught Simit and me. Yes, what, what Simit is saying is correct. It's highly reminded to solve them on your own and post your doubts in the Discord if um, we will help. Okay. Yes, yes. Ah, because implementing all the things in the class doesn't uh, be possible, right? Because it's very difficult. Discord link. Okay. Simit, can you post the Discord link here in the chat? So I'm, I'm sharing, I mean, stopping the screen. Okay. Okay, Roshan posted who is not joined the server to join that and post your doubts great roshan do you want to say anything or else we can end the session roshan Pimit, or any of kiran Okay, question. So Kiran, so we can end the session and stop sharing. Yeah, we can wrap it up. Thank you everyone. Thank you for attending and attend the next sessions also. I would like to add that